Damn you syndicated American television corporations stealing our celebrities away so we don't get to see them at the premiere of the movie that they star in. Damn you. But don't ever change because you make good shows. <laughs> Today was very, very busy at the Sundance. I have been up for way more than 12 hours, I can tell you that. I was up at 6 again, got over to the mark. Luckily, my father was very nice and gave me and my mother a ride. My initial intent was to get in line for Shadow Dancer, waitlist line. Um, as it turns out, they were not anywhere near sold out, so they just sold us our tickets right there because we kn they knew we would get in. So it was really nice. I got to go wait in the ticket holder line near the front. Got in. Got great seats. Shadow Dancer was. It was really. It was really good. The more I think about it, the more I liked it more. It was one of those movies that like started off slow. Kind of started off like I don't really know where this is going, but then I just, I really responded well to it. It's directed by uh, James Marsh. It stars uh, Cl stars Clive Owen, uh, Andrea Riseborough, Aidan Gillen, Dom Hall Gleason, and Gill Gillian Anderson. Solid, solid cast right there. Um, yeah, and it deals with uh, uh, Andrea Riseborough's character. Her name is Colette. She's a mother, a single mother of a young boy, but she's also an IRA member. And uh, she goes to London to bomb the, to the tube, but fails. And she's taken in by this MI5 agent, played by Clive Owen. It's like basically uh, brought in prison for the rest of your life without seeing your son or um, inform for us. So she agrees to inform, and then shit starts happening. You know, her um, brothers in arms they start to see, they start to suspect her, and then Mac discovers there's more stuff going on. James Marsh directed one of the Red Riding movies uh, for BBC, and um, so he he has a good idea of the seedy underbelly of UK crime. I mean, even though he's well most well known for documentaries, he won the Oscar for Man on Wire. Um, it's still, uh, it's, um, it's well, it's very well done. I'd say the thing that really did it for me, the thing that really was like, made me go, go up, stand up and say, oh, oh, well, this is actually not that, this is actually very good. Uh, it was the ending. No spoilers, but the ending was surprising and it was ballsy. It was really, really, really good ending to the movie. Um, I know that sounds weird, but like, it's, it's not, that's not what I mean. I'm not, I wasn't happy because it ended. I thought the ending of the movie was a very nice cap on everything that happened and a very interesting cap you know what shut up next up i left uh shadow dancer and got right back in line for the other dream team because i already had tickets for that and, uh like i said in my review down right there i was very very disappointed in my father for not wearing the shirt it was uh, he has the shirt he loves the grateful dead um it, one of the players on the team was his favorite player during that time period and he doesn't wear the shirt so the other dream team was awesome i really really liked it um it was, I mean, just by reading the um, synopsis in the program or something, you would think it's just, you know, about the basketball team, but it's actually not. It's actually equal parts sports documentary, equal parts political documentary, because it deals quite a lot with um, Lithuania's fight, from fight for independence from the USSR, you know, when that whole thing started to happen. And it deals a, l a lot with that. And um, you so, because it goes so in depth with um, the political stuff, you really feel the stakes that were um, placed on the Lithuanian team during the Olympics because, you know, this small country of three million is going up against this world superpower, and they win. And so it's like, wow, and it's this crazy, crazy thing. And that moment of triumph is, like, better than in most sports movies. It's so well done here. Uh, and then, of course, you know, it's got Grateful Dead music. And that's pretty cool. And then um, went over to California Solo. Now, even though California Solo is not my favorite movie of the festival, it is definitely my favorite performance. Robert Carlyle in this movie is amazing. He's so good in this movie. I think, you know, if it gets the right press and it gets picked up by a distributor, I think this this could be the movie for Robert Carlyle, kind of like what uh, like um, what Crazy Heart was for Jeff Bridges, you know, a star who was kind of big, but then never really never really made it, and then like does this one movie that just really shows off all their talent and wins them an Oscar, whatever. Um, 
I think that could be this for Robert Carlyle, excluding the fact that California Solo is actually quite a lot like Crazy Heart. Um, I mean, because they, they have, like, they have the same um, bone structure to them, pretty much. It's uh, an aged rocker who um, doesn't really deal with the business anymore, um, fallen in hard times, alcoholic, you know, finds a chance of redemption. Um, yeah, so, I mean, initially it was just like, oh, well, I've seen this story before. I could just go see Crazy Heart. But there's some stuff that California Solo does that's actually very, very interesting. Um, for starters, it's set most, a lot of it is set on um, actually an organic farm of all places because Robert Carlyle's character, Lachlan, works at an organic farm. Um, and those scenes are handled with great care and, like, you really, you know, get a cool idea of what it's like to actually work there. And uh, also... Uh, whereas, like, you know, movies like Crazy Heart or, you know, I guess to a certain extent, other m music movies like, I guess, I don't know, Spinal Tap, sure, why not? They all deal with people trying to break back into the music industry. And what I liked about Crazy, um, about California Solo is that Lachlan, Robert Carlyle's character, Lachlan, doesn't want to go back at all. He just wants, you know, he just, he just wants some sort of redemption and then, you know, he's and then he's picked up for a DUI, and he might get deported, and crazy stuff starts happening. He just keeps digging himself bigger and bigger holes. But Robert Carlyle is so good, he always makes you sympathize with him. Um, yeah, it's really, it was really, really, really powerful, for, powerful performance. The rest of the movie ain't bad either. The soundtrack's really, really great. The other actors in it are, you know, serviceable, but re this is Carlyle's movie. And he runs away with it, and he's like the only thing you remember at the end of it. So anyway, yeah, that was my busy day, and now for my last two days, things start to wind down a little bit. I get to sleep in tomorrow. I have a panel. I'm going to a panel at one. Hopefully, I get in, and then I have tickets to a short program, and then the main event. Oh yes, hit record. Oh my God, we so excited. So that's gonna be amazing. Um. I'm going with my dad and getting there really early because I want to be right there in the front. I want him to see me. I want him to, like, come down and shake my hand and give me a hug. And, well, let's, we won't go into that. Goodbye.